just want to welcome you and thank you for taking time out on a beautiful day to join us. This is our last Wings for Widows Zoom call of the season. And we so much appreciate your engagement with these calls as we've gone through this season. Um, whether you attended just once or you intend, attended several times. Um, it's wonderful to know that we have a group of people that um, really want to learn more and, and engage with, with our services. So I'm Leanne Lorian, and I'm coming from you to you from the great state of Hawaii. I am, <laughs> I am here for my grandson's high school graduation in a couple of days. And I have my lay on. I just mm -hmm. wanted to see it. <laughs> it smells so good. And so if you uh, see, I'm in the guest room. And uh, so forgive the uh, unprofessional looking background, but that's where I am right now. Um, There are dozens of volunteers that make an organization like Wings for Widows work. I don't know if you realize, but we are an all volunteer organization, except for we have one full-time administrative assistant and one part-time. And so that is amazing for um, the amount of work that gets accomplished and the people that we serve. So um, just wanted to let you know that if you feel led to be a volunteer with Wings for Widows, particularly we need additional widow advocates who are the widows who kind of come alongside newer widows and spend time with them, just conversation. Um, I am looking for volunteers. We ask that you be two years past the death of your spouse and um, I just love to talk to you more about what it involves. So keep that in mind over the summer. If something um, seems like after you hear Susie talk about living an intentional life, perhaps that will be kind of a call on your life to help in this way. We are finding that we're having more and more people take advantage of our services now that COVID seems to be on the wane and people are kind of waking up from whatever this was we had this past year, kind of a strange never, never land that we were living in. So um, it will be good to have additional volunteers on our, on our team. Um, we also wanted to make sure that you know that we have financial coaches who are available to work with you at any time, whether you've um, been a long time in your loss or a short time. And Grant, who will be on in just a minute, is one of those people um, who is one of our coaches. If you haven't ever investigated that, just go on the Wings for Widows website and you'll see an orange bar across the top of your screen and it says first step. Just click on that and that will get you right into our um, kind of our process. Um, I want to also introduce that we're going to have a fall forum and I've already lined up the whole schedule for fall. And some wonderful nationally known speakers, some authors, some more kind of interactive seminar type uh, presentations. And so because we are changing the format and doing it, I hope uh, in a way that meets needs in a better way, we're gonna change the name too. And it's gonna be called Arise, a widow's forum. And so when you see advertisements or emails coming out this summer with that information and it says Arise, a widow's forum, that is what this is and um, I have wonderful speakers lined up you'll want to engage in all of those so thank you again and I want to thank our speakers tonight Grant Meyer and Susie Schultz I'm going to introduce Grant first Grant is first on our schedule for this evening 
Grant Meyer was one of the first financial planners to step forward and volunteer with Wings for Widows. He has a heart for the widow community and it shows in everything that he does. I have sat in on coaching sessions with Grant and clients. He is patient, compassionate, clear, and has a wealth of knowledge in every situation. Grant is a certified financial planner. And after 13 years in the industry, he has just started his own financial planning firm just at the beginning of 2021. Not exactly the most fortuitous time to start a business, Grant, but good for you. God bless you as you work through this first year of your business. It's called GTS Financial. Grant told me just, just last week, life is indeed challenging at all stages and in different ways. He has two little kiddos that are waiting for their bath this evening. <laughs> But it is true that if we keep faith and hope in God, we will be okay. And that is essential. So welcome, Grant. Thank you for taking time to share with us this evening. Thank you very much, Leanne. That was uh, a wonderful introduction. And uh, yeah, I've been an advisor now for 13 years and I volunteer as a financial coach with Wings now for a little over a year and a half. And it, uh, it's just fantastic to be a part of the community. And I, I enjoy speaking at these events and it, it, what a wonderful organization. I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about, get my screen going here, some tips on how you can save money. So part of my job on a day-to-day -day basis as a financial advisor, of course, you know, dealing with investments and retirement, but I also talk to people about ways to save money, help with big money decisions like buying cars, homes, things like that. I love negotiating, reading negotiation books and tips and tricks on that. And what I found is there's a lot of different tips and tricks with online shopping or ways to save in person that people aren't taking advantage of. And I wrote an online article about this and it happened to be one of the most widely liked and you know, retweeted and, and republished articles that I've written. So I thought I would share that with this audience tonight and give you four take-home tips that you can start using today. Um, well, if you're going to buy anything today, but very soon in the near future um, to start saving money on your purchases. And who can benefit from this? What are we going to talk about tonight? Well, there's going to be four tips and uh, who can benefit? Well, pretty much anybody and everybody that likes to save money when they're shopping. So this is uh, applicable pretty much in all areas of life. So the first tip I have, uh, this came about um, actually from a book uh, that a FBI hostage negotiator uh, wrote and I, I attended one of his courses and he teaches about a tip that he calls the ask. And this one little trick has literally saved me thousands of dollars a year. And let me get my chat window going too, just so I can make sure that I can see in case there are any questions, feel free please to uh, answer or ask in the chat. There we go. All right, so what is the ask? One day I was driving to work and as I was driving, I had a light come on in my dashboard and it said that I had an issue with my brakes. And generally you don't wanna drive without brakes in your car. So I thought that was a pretty important thing to pull over and find uh, a repair shop. Well, it just so happened to be just out of pure luck that I was really close to the repair shop that I usually go to and I bring my car in. So I very carefully make my way uh, down to this repair shop and I get into the garage, I get out, I'm in the waiting area, waiting for the bad news. Uh, if anybody's been in a situation where you know you need a car repair, uh, it's never fun, right? When you're kind of just waiting with bated breath, uh, what is that magic number gonna come back as? And so he comes back, I see him walking through the door. He has a long list of papers in his hand. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what, uh, what is this bill gonna be today? And so he sits down and he goes over everything and, and it all sounds, fairly legitimate and, and so he comes up with his total and here's what I said back to him. 
I said, uh, Bob, his name was Bob. I said, Bob, you know, I've been taking my car here for many years and you can look in the service records. You know, I've, I've been here a long time. I have a valued customer here. Sometimes when I have unexpected repairs, uh, I've been offered discounts in the past just as a nice gesture. Would you be willing to do that for me again this time? And then I stopped. Notice there was a long pause there. And so you know what Bob said? Bob said, sure, yeah, I could give you a 10% discount if you'd like. And I said, wonderful, that would be great. And just like that, with one little trick, I saved thousands of dollars on that repair. It was a pretty big repair, unfortunately. Now, it sounds easy, right, to ask for a discount, but there's some subtle psychological tricks that you can use to actually make this tip a little bit better. And it can also help if you feel uneasy about asking for a discount, using these tips can also improve your rates of success. So here's the secret sauce, here's the formula. See if you caught this in my story. So the first tip, step one, I've outlined in this dark blue here. You don't wanna just jump in and say, Bob, I want a discount. What we wanna do is we wanna preface our ask with some sort of phrase in the front. In my particular instance, what I did is I let him know that I've been coming there a long time, which is true, and that in the past they had done something for me. That little trick is called holding somebody to standards. So we as people, we have these images of ourselves, how we act, what we value, things we do. And companies also have that. They have values that they prioritize and you can find them on their website or on signage in the shop. Like, we promise to give you the best service or we promise the lowest price or you know things like that. If a company says a standard, you can hold them to it in order to get discounts. So in this case, the company had done this for me in the past and I was asking him to honor that standard and to continue that relationship. So if you ever are in a situation where you're trying to get a discount and you see signs about the company going above and beyond for you or always doing an extra mile for the customer or things like that, you can say, hey, I noticed on your website that you know you always try to have the lowest price in town. I happen to find it somewhere else and I don't really wanna drive there. Could you live up to that standard? Could you meet that and give me the lowest price in town? So before I ask for the discount, we ask for some sort of standard or we look for some standard. Again, you can find it online at their website. You can uh, go into their store. There's usually like brochures or little tents and look for what the company says that they're gonna do and hold them to that. That's worked many times for me. The other thing you can do is empathy goes a long way. We've all heard the phrase that you catch more flies with honey rather than vinegar. And the way that you can use empathy when getting discounts or perhaps just making your life a little bit easier, think about a time when say you've been uh, dealing with a customer service, you call a 1-800 number and it's the customer complaint department and they're trying to resolve your claim. And just think about the people on the other end of that line. They sit there day in, day out for their job and listen to, listen to people complain about things. And these people probably aren't always nice to them. So if you remember that when you're calling, you can use phrases like, um, we'll just say Leanne is this wonderful call service person. I say, Leanne, you know, it's been, uh, you've been really generous with your time. I bet you have kind of a tough job, don't you? Just talking to people that uh, complain all the time, boy, that, that kind of stinks. Um, boy, you know, yeah, would I be crazy though? You know, could you help me with blank? Could you get me a discount or could you continue that low price for me? Or I need help with my bill. So by you putting yourself in the other person's shoes and empathizing with them, it's a way to win favor and then make them more likely to ask for, to honor that discount or help you with a bill or you know do something that you need to get done. So the secret sauce, step one, either hold the standards or use empathy. Another thing with empathy is you can say, Oh, you know, would it be crazy of me? Like, I'm going to ask you something and you're just going to think I'm nuts and I don't even think I should ask it. Oh, I'm just going to be so embarrassed and you'll probably think the worst of me and you just go on and on and on. And they'll finally just say, no, just ask me. It's okay. When they give you that permission, that's another way to kind of set the tone. Second part is simply make the ask. The third part is where a lot of people trip up. Once you make the ask, be silent. And this is the hard part and it takes practice, but the silence is actually what gets 
the job done. So you empathize or you hold them to a standard, you ask for the discount or whatever it is you need, and then you be quiet and you just let the silence work. Now, the trick with this is to practice. Uh, there's one fun example, uh, a person walked into a store and uh, he heard the employees talking about, oh, how they work there, get in, they get an employee discount and the guy goes, do you have a Chris discount by file? This man, by, by chance, this guy's name was Chris. And just by asking a silly question and being silent, they said, sure, Chris, we could give you a Chris discount and got a 10% discount. Um, or you can try to call up your credit card company if you have a credit card with an annual fee you can practice on them and say, you know what? Uh, I'm sure you get asked this all the time. Uh, you know, this would be crazy of me, I know, uh, but would there be any way you could waive the annual fee for me? So the negotiator in this book talks about how he gets his credit card fees waived every single year and never has to pay one. For a little bonus tip, for those of you who uh, caught my last uh, webinar here, if you need a car repair, and you are not familiar with car work, I'm not a mechanic myself, and you feel a little bit uneasy if you can trust the mechanic, do some research. If you use Google to your, as your friend, let me pull just a Google screen in here, and let's just type in um, brake line repair or replace. What you'll, what you'll be able to find is really quickly, how much does it cost to repair brake lines? And then we can get on some forum right here. And right away, we can at least get um, some tips and tricks on why you would need to repair brake lines. This is what my car happened to need because my brake line looked like that, it was corroded. So for those of you who aren't as familiar with cars, if you can wait, like obviously I need the brakes right away, so I couldn't wait, but if you can wait, or if before you go in, do a little research and you might be able to save yourself some headaches and make sure that you keep the auto mechanic honest if you've never been there before. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, three and four are gonna deal with online shopping. So my second tip is called secret codes. And we've all been uh, shopping online and we've noticed uh, when you go to checkout, right, there's always a little box that says promo code or coupon code, right? So one time I was purchasing a piece of software and I went online, I got through to the checkout area, I saw that little box and I did a quick Google search for that company and coupon codes. And sure enough, a website came up, had a coupon code, I pasted it in and saved a couple hundred bucks on that purchase. So anytime you see that box, think, gee, I need to go search for that. Now I have a couple ways uh, that, that can help with that. So let me grab my browser. So first off is you can just say, for instance, uh, one software I use is called MailChimp. So MailChimp coupons. And just by searching, you can pull up coupon codes and you can you know, usually see pretty decent options, say 30% off, say 15% off with these coupon codes. Another little trick, which is as easy to do, is if you use the browser called Edge, so there's Chrome, Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. If you use Edge, Edge actually has a built-in coupon finder for you. So if I visit MailChimp.com, in Edge, you'll notice right up here, I'll kind of do a couple of circles around that. In Edge, you'll see this site has coupons, one coupon found, and it has a coupon code for you right there. So if you just use Edge, it will eliminate some of that searching. Here's another trick though. Oftentimes when you visit websites, like recently I was looking for a pillow um, and there's a pillow company that I really wanted and I went to their website and when I got to the website, a little box popped up and it said, hey, are you a first time visitor? Click here for a coupon code. Now notice it doesn't pop up anymore. So here's a little trick that I, that I use. So for a first time visit, you can enter your information in that pop up. But if you don't uh, do it the first time and you come back and you want that pop up, use incognito or private mode in your browser. So here's why that works is 
this website stores information on your computer that you visited here before. It then knows it's already shown you the pop-up. So if you click on that little tab, little three dots, and you do new private window, or in Chrome, it's called incognito mode. And we go back to the website. Now we're in incognito mode and pop, there we go. Unlock 10% off your order, just like that. So I went in the regular browser, no pop-up, and in incognito or private mode, we get that pop-up. So there's a little trick for everybody that you may not have known. You can also use the chat now feature on many websites to use that first tip that we talked about, the ask. So many websites have a little chat bubble at the bottom where you can talk to an associate. One time I was shopping online, I saw that little bubble, I saw there was coupon code, I searched, couldn't find anything, I clicked that bubble and a, and a person came on and I said, I'm looking to purchase, I see there's a coupon code, do you have any coupon codes that you can offer me? And I just got a coupon code right in the chat window just by asking. And so that chat window can be very useful. One other little bonus tip, um, again, for those who caught my last uh, speech on cybersecurity, never use your debit card online while shopping. Tip number three, I call abandonment, usually never a good thing, not positive connotations around abandonment. However, when online shopping, it's a little trick that uh, you can learn. So abandonment in online shopping, behind the scenes what happens is there's all these computers and, and algorithms and they store cook things called cookies on your, on your desktop. They know when you visit their website, they know what you're looking at, they know what you click on. And all that tracking is meant for them to increase their sales. But if you understand that, you can actually leverage their own tricks against them. So one thing I've done is when I wanna buy something, I visit a website, I put it in my cart, like if it's a real good, like a, a pillow for instance, I'll put it in my cart and I'll make sure that I have like a log in there, a username, password, um, so that way they know who it is. And then I close it out and I don't buy anything, I just leave it in my cart. And this doesn't happen all the time, but on certain websites, I've gotten emails where it says, hey, it looks like you've forgotten to check out. We'll offer you 5% discount to come back and buy these things. I was gonna buy them already, but just by putting them in my cart, closing the window, waiting a day or two, and then coming back, I was able to get the discount code. Another way to get a discount code is I was purchasing a software program and I tried to cancel the software. I actually didn't wanna cancel it. I meant to keep it. However, when I tried to cancel it, I got pushed to a representative who said, I'm sorry that you're gonna cancel. Can we offer you a 12 month discount on the software? And I said, yes. So I was already gonna use it for the 12 months. I could have paid full price, but I just clicked on cancel and that brought me to a person that offered me a discount. And the last little tip here is the free trial. Take advantage of trial savings. Oftentimes around Black Friday, Christmas shopping, different times of the year, this is usually, uh, you'll see this on uh, probably, you know, in the new year with like gym memberships or subscriptions like that. Um, you'll, at certain periods of time, you'll see try one month for free or two months for free or 30 days free. And the thing that they're doing, which we all know, is they hope that you sign up and then forget to cancel it. Um, you can take advantage of trials, but we wanna be the exception to that. So a trial, you can usually can get, you know, one month free or 14 days free. But here's the secret sauce to how to leverage trials. Take advantage of the, to, of the free time frame, but then go to your calendar and one day before that trial period ends, put a notice on what you wanna cancel, the website to do so, how much it should be. And lo and behold, if you like it, you may get a discount to continue to keep it. Or if you're not gonna use it, you've had a free trial and you now know. So even if you think you're gonna buy something, a software program or subscription to a gym or anything like that, if they offer a free trial, take advantage of that as that's a nice discount. So the last, uh, last slide is just a summation of everything we spoke about here, the four tips for everybody to remember. One is making the ask, 
Again, step one is using some sort of empathy or holding them to standards. Step two is making the discount ask or whatever it is you want them to do for you. And step three is being quiet and letting the silence help you. Tip number two is using secret codes, whether that's in your browser with Microsoft Edge or Googling for a code or using that incognito or private mode in case you want that pop-up for a discount when you visit the website the first time. And this should go uh, without saying, but I do wanna mention this too. Uh, don't be afraid to create a junk email account um, to keep your main email account clutter-free. So if you want discount codes, coupon codes, I have an email account that's just for coupon and discount codes when I'm shopping. And that way I can keep my main email inbox clean. Email accounts are free and easy to sign up for something I do. Number three is abandon the stuff that you put in your cart or try to cancel and you may be able to get a discount that way. And number four is take advantage of trial periods, but remember to put something on your calendar so you don't forget to cancel. And with that, thank you so much uh, for your time. Let me see if there's any questions. If anybody has any questions on any tips or ways to save or anything, thank you for the uh, applause, Anastasia. Appreciate that. Um, it was wonderful. Happy savings to everybody. And thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful night. Wow, Grant, that was great. Very helpful. Now, if I can just remember, I wrote it all down, but I couldn't remember to do it. Do and you'll you still have this uh, recorded so they can go back and watch, correct? That is true. And it, it gets posted usually a week or two after the actual call. Do you, um, Sally Smith has uh, a wonderful thing. Concerned about leaving a credit card number for free trials. Um, that's a good point. So there's a, there's a couple different things you can do. Um, one is you can use a prepaid credit card. So sometimes uh, I you, when you go shopping, you'll get like a prepaid card, like a hundred dollar gift card. Like I just recently needed tires and I went to Discount Plus, got some tires, and then I got a hundred dollar Visa gift card. And the way you can use that for that, so that way there's some sort of limit. Um, but usually, yeah, you will need to keep a credit card on file with them. Um, and that's where having that calendar reminder comes into play. And uh, so that way you can cancel it before they charge it. Um, and using a credit card also is a safer way than using a debit card since it's not your real money in your checking account. You have some protections in case there's fraudulent purchases there as well. Perfect. I have it set up on my credit cards that at any purchase comes, I get a text message. Yes. So, you know, and I just, you know, swipe it off if I know it was me, but it's kind of nice to have that. And I got that after Dave died because I did have someone use his card fraudulently, even though I had canceled it. Yes. That's a fantastic tip. That's uh, something we talk about in our coaching sessions, actually setting up those alerts on your credit cards. Absolutely. Yeah. So it doesn't stop somebody from doing it, but it lets you know right away if something happens and you can step in and they'll uh, investigate and return the money to you. Oh, you have to be so smart these days, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Grant? Grant, did you say you had written an article um, with these tips in it? I did. I published an article on social media and on my company's website blog uh, that has these four tips. I can. Um, Would you be willing to share that link with this audience? You could send it to me and I can get it out to everybody. Absolutely. I just put it in the chat um, for everybody that can reference that. Um, it's down, look for a section, it's called Level Up Your Life for Tips to Save Money. And it's, uh, it's on that page, so. Yeah, Susie has a, a, a document that we're gonna be sending out to everybody anyway. So if you, I'll take that and, uh, and send that out as well. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I want to introduce my dear friend, Susie Schultz. Susie and I, if you haven't been on a call with Susie before, Susie and I were roommates in college. And unfortunately, that means we've known each other almost 50 years. 
<laughs> so, um, Susie, um, I, I, I wrote this, Susie, you're going to laugh when I read what I wrote about you, but I said, we go back 50 years, but while I was goofing off and trying several different careers, Susie worked her way up through the ranks of a corporation's HR department. She was there for 30 years. She is a highly respected teacher, trainer, speaker, and coach. Following her HR career, she launched her own consulting firm and works with large corporations in team building and talent development. Susie's one of our most popular WINGS teachers, and she has been leading our Finding Purpose After Loss class for the last, what, year and a half now? Yeah. yeah. And she always gets rave reviews. Susie is a brand new grandma. She has a little five month old little granddaughter. And that's super exciting because during this time, she's been struggling as her husband, Rob, fights cancer. And he's been fighting cancer for three years. So it's been a tough time for her. So little Claire is a huge blessing in their lives right now. Um, I know she's going to share some wonderful tips for us on living an intentional life. Thanks, Suze. Thanks, Leanne. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is fun. I don't think Leanne was ever goofing around that I can remember. We had lots of fun together, uh, but have both um, pursued many things that have been become passions for us. Um, I, I do think that this topic of living an intentional life is one that is very has become very important to me, and I'm going to share why that is in the next a little bit that we have. And um, and some of it is actually I spoke to this group. I believe it was last October, and this is almost and that's online. If you want to, it's it's taped and on the YouTube channel for Wings for Widows. But this is kind of a continuation almost of that. Uh, talk that I talked about living that, uh, doing an inventory of your life and then intentionally adding things to it or taking things away that you know need to leave your life. So anyway, that might be a suggestion if, if you want more information on this topic too, even as we uh, go into it tonight. You know, as I have the honor of speaking with you tonight, I, I actually am fully aware that I, I have not walked in your shoes. Uh, I, I have not lost my husband. Um, and, and yet, um, it has been it has been a long journey, as Leanne mentioned, Rob was diagnosed with cancer in August of 2017. It was, he's had now seven surgeries, maximum radiation, chemo, and he's on immunotherapy to keep this aggressive cancer at bay. So it has been quite a journey. And I, and I do think it's, it's interesting how even listening to Betsy Anderson, when she spoke, it's these, these losses, even those losses kind of pile up. And, um, so, so in that setting last time, I asked you to think about a strange question. And I've heard from a couple of you that are on this call that this was an interesting question for you that you still think about. And the question I asked that I'm going to ask you again to think about right now, if you were a kitchen utensil, what kitchen utensil would you be and why? And then I asked you to think about this prior to your husband's death, to your loss, to that incredible change that took place in your life, would you have been the same utensil? And I really do want you to think about that. And if we have time or whatever at the end, we maybe can come back to that or talk about that with someone that you can reflect on that. And the reason is this, I shared that before my husband's diagnosis, I would say that I was a whisk. I was running around like crazy, throwing everything into the bowl. I was doing my job, my new business, church, speaking things, family. I mean, I was just had so much stuff going on. It was just all in a whirl of activity. And yet now that 
Rob has had this and, and, and even COVID it has changed lots of things. I am now moving at a much slower, different pace. I am being very intentional about what I throw on the bowl. And I'm like a spatula now, just scraping the edges of that bowl. And I really am conscious about getting the most out of every day, every week, every month, and even this year of COVID. Um, it's been a tough year in lots of ways. And Rob had two more surgeries in this year. So it's, it's this very intentional scraping the bowl. But I do want to tell you that this is not the first time that I've had the wake up call about living life intentionally. The first time was shortly, um, as shortly it was in 1980 and my 20 year old brother was killed in a motorcycle accident. And at that time, my company sent me to a seminar, a workshop to learn about some topic. I don't remember the topic anymore, what they even sent me to learn. But the speaker there shared a poem, which I never forgot. I went up to the speaker afterwards and I said, can I have a copy of this poem? And I got the copy. I posted it in my office at work and it still is posted in my office here 41 years later. And this is the poem. Life's a bother, life's a worry, life's a busy crowded way. Good intentions go astray. I had a friend the other day. I haven't anymore. He passed away. I meant to write, to phone, to call. I didn't do any of those things at all. Life's a bother, life's a worry, life's a busy crowded way. Good intentions go astray. Now, I'm not sharing that with you to bring sadness. You have had your share of sadness with the loss of your husband. And I, so I'm not sharing it for that reason. I don't share it with you either to bring booming, crashing waves of guilt upon you in any way, shape, or form with your past or with your present relationships. Because I, like you, also have those self-talk that plays out, if only I would have. We all have that, enough of that. No, I really share this because as sad as it is, the reality of a potentially life-ending illness, like my husband's, and the reality of the loss of a loved one, especially a beloved spouse, a life partner, it creates this very difficult, but also an extremely motivating realization that life is short and that it heightens our sense of wanting to and needing to live a life with intention to get the most out of it, to scrape the bowl with your spatula and taste and see the goodness and the joy of your life. Yes, even your life as it is now, which has been drastically and forever changed with loss. So tonight we're going to look at three things rather quickly. What is it to be intentional? Why is it important to be intentional? And what are some just some quick practical tools and tips to live an intentional life? So first of all, what is it to be intentional, to live an intentional life? I want you to just to take a second and think about what does being intentional even mean to you? When you think of living an intentional life, would you, what words would you use to describe what that would look like or what words would come to you? Just quickly put in a, the chat if you can, just a one word. Okay, good. Yep, you guys are good. Just keep them coming for a little bit. Okay, so we've got presence, on purpose, planned, 
calendar. Oh, all these P words. Look at all this. Presence, planning, purpose, on purpose, planned. All of those things. And that is exactly right. Being intentional means being very, very planned, deliberate, having presence of mind, presence of place. It's calculated. It's meant. It's prearranged. It's all of those things. It's a very studied, purposeful, and willful approach to what you are doing. And for me, as I take all of those words, and thank you, I love all of them that you shared, it's also about doing, accomplishing. It's a picture, though, if you will, of adding with that, moving forward. Not just moving for the sake of moving, but moving forward with purpose and with clarity. And to do that, you need to make choices, uh, very intentional, deliberate choices to act with knowledge and clarity around what is important to you, what is important to me, and those things are your values. Now, it is important also for us to know what living an intentional life is not, uh, because it's not about being busy. It's not about filling the hours. It's not about accomplishing and working nonstop and wearing your busyness as a badge of honor or staying so busy that you literally do not have time to feel, to think, or to even check in with your emotional well being. And, and maybe some of you, that's it helps you at times because it doesn't give you time to even stop and feel or to even grieve. But that's not what being intentional is about, just filling time and being so busy. Recently, I came across a writing by a consultant. His name is Mark Pettit, and he is out of the United Kingdom. And I liked what he said about an intentional life, and he defined it this way. Being intentional is about bringing commitment, focus, and attention to something that is important to you. Again, your values. It is, he also went on to say that to be intentional every day is getting clear upfront about what you want to achieve and then taking action to achieve it. So again, it's values, choices, and taking action to achieve it. So our next question is really why? is it important to be intentional, to live an intentional life? And for me, the why the importance of this comes has hit me when I have days when I have been so busy, the day has been filled and I literally fall into bed at night and I am absolutely puzzled about what did I do all day? Where did that day go? I just am so puzzled. Or I lay in bed at night, wide awake, and I remember all too clearly what I have done that day. And I think with regret, why did I spend my time on that? So years ago, I had a poster in my office and it had this quote, make each day count. Ultimately, what you accomplish in your life is a result of what you accomplish in a normal day. It is a call to you and to me to make each day count that life and each day is a gift. And this is so clearly written in, in the Psalms for us, in Psalms 90. And I love this. This is what it says. We glide along the tides of time as swiftly as a racing river and vanish as quickly as a dream. We are like grass that is green in the morning, but mowed down and withered before the evening shadows fall. Therefore, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to be wise and spend them as we should. And for me, the hard truth in this is that I know this from my own experience, having seen my brother killed at age 20, from seeing my husband go from a perfectly healthy man to having each of his days literally numbered now. And you know this from your experience as well, having lost your dearly beloved spouses. Yes, all of our days are numbered. 
But for all of us, it is a call and it's an encouraging call. It provides hope. It gives us direction. It points us forward with purpose and intention to be wise and spend those days that we have on the things that are of value, that are important, that will have a lasting impact, a, a lasting impact on you, yourself, and taking care of yourself in your own state of mind and you, the state of your body. In, it has a lasting impact on others as well. Those that you love, your, their, your family, your friends, those that you're close to, but maybe even for people that you don't even know that you are called on or feeling the call to love and to help in some way. Why? Because you have positively impacted today. What you do today can have a positive impact on going. The ripples go out. It goes out from all of us every day to other people, ongoing and ongoing and ongoing, what we do and what we say. To not have our good intentions go astray, to lay our heads on our pillows at night and say, you know what? Today was a good day. It was a good day. I didn't waste it. I did not let my intentions go astray. Ed Bliss wrote the book years ago called Getting Things Done. And he said, the first thing in order to get things done is achieving your goals is to recognize that someday is not a day of the week. Someday is not a day of the week. Good thing to remember. So how, what are some practical tools, some practical tips for us as we look at leave it, leading an intentional life? First of all, I mentioned values. It's important to clarify your values. What is important to you? And there are lots of value card sorts uh, and value assessments. We do one in the Discover class that, that I've been doing for Wings for Widows. But there are, they are going to post a very simple value assessment um, PDF after the class, and that will give you a place to start. There's lots of things online. Some of them are kind of complicated but figure out what is important to you. And once you figure that out, really pay attention to that. And I'm just gonna only, you can take every single value that you end up with as being important to you. And you can look at your life and say, am I doing anything in my life every day where I am paying attention to what is important to me? So for example, if it is important to, if physical exercise is important to you, well then, on your list every day should be exercising, going to the gym, getting in the pool, buy, spend your money on that treadmill and put it in your office, whatever it is. If that's important to you, spend time and spend money on it. If it's not important to you, it won't be on your calendar and you won't spend money on it. Relationships for many of us, especially this year in COVID, relationships, friendships, people have become extremely important to us and we're longing to be together. Put time on your calendar for relationships, walking with a friend, meeting someone for coffee, Zooming with them, whatever it is. But figure out those values, clarify that because those are going to be the things that you're going to use to make daily choices. Then have a daily plan. If you don't have any idea how you are going to spend your day, chances are somebody else is going to figure out how you will spend your day. So you have to figure out this general idea of what you're going to do with your day and have it planned out. And I'm not talking about being rigid. I mean, there's days you have to flex. You've got to change things up. You had a plan and it totally, you know, it's, it's out the window. You've got to flex. I'm not talking about being inflexible, but still have a plan. So how do you have a plan? I'm going to share with you what I have done for literally my whole career and my personal life. And it is this, write stuff down, write, have a list and put it in a spiral notebook. You can see I have a spiral notebook. It's a college rule notebook. I buy them on Amazon by the stack and I don't throw them out. I write on them putting together a list of everything that I need to get done and everything I want to get done. And after you have all those items written down, I mean, literally just empty your head of what you think you're going to do that day. Put the date, 
put the month and write it down. And then you start making choices and you prioritize. Well, how do you prioritize? First of all, look at the things that again, go back to your values. What do those things are that bring you meaning, purpose, joy, and it's really important to you and think about doing them. So I mentioned relationships. For example, when my mom was alive, I would try and call her every single day. And if I did not prioritize that call to my mom, when I got in bed at night, I would think, why didn't I call mom today? I could have taken five minutes to do that. It meant so much to her. Prioritize that, the things that are important to you. For me, my value also is faith and I learning is high on my value. So I have learned over the years that a priority for me is to start my day off with journaling, Bible reading, prayer, being in that place where I just have that time set aside before I go into any of the other stuff that I need to do or want to do. And it really allows my mind to be focused from the beginning of the day on God's grace and his love for me. And I am amazed at how that helps my perspective of everything that happens the rest of the day, if I can just start my day that way. But that is something that I value. Secondly, for prioritizing, Look at your list and figure out what is really important for you to do that you don't want to do. The things that you're dreading, the things like maybe it's pulling stuff together for your taxes, or it's going online to pay your business's quarterly sales taxes, or it might be having a difficult conversation that you know you need to have with a child or a friend or a vendor or somebody and you have put these things on your list and they're in your spiral notebook day after day after day and you're not doing it because you don't want to do it and so it creates more stress and anxiety and the more you put it off the worse it gets until it becomes so urgent that now you really have no choice you could have put it on the list done it prepared for it done it checked it off. Um, and if you do that, it's going to just make your life so much less stressful. And things that we dread many times are not that bad. And it doesn't take that long. I'll go back to where I learned that. Again, it's utensils. A utensil drawer drove me crazy. Every time I opened that drawer, something got stuck. I couldn't find the potato peeler. I couldn't find my favorite knife. I'm like, I would get so mad every time I opened that drawer or tried to shut it. Well, I stopped to clean the thing out. Took me less than two minutes, literally. I had it cleaned out and a problem. Why did I put up with the stress and aggravation? That's true of many things in our life. Just tackle it and be done. Another thing about your list, take your spiral notebook, if you will, and put it beside your bed with a pen. Do you ever lay in bed at night and you can't go to sleep because you're thinking of things that you are going to remember? I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to, I got to remember to do that. Sit up in bed, write it down so that you can say, okay, I've got it. I'll remember it. I can go to sleep now. Use that. You need to then, once you have all this list and prioritization done, you need to just get started. You need to take action. So when you do something, check it off the list. When you do something that's not on the list, write it down and check that off too, so that you're keeping track of all of the things that you're doing. And why do you do that? Couple things, a sense of accomplishment. It's amazing how much that can help us with just looking at our days and saying, this day I got this done and these were the things that were important to me. The other thing, that I've learned from working with Wings for Widows is about the widow fog. And I'll tell you what, it is so helpful to go back to that list because you can be like, I thought I wrote, I thought I wrote a note to that person. Did I write a note to that person? Did I pay that bill? 
did I do that? And you can go back to your notebook, leaf through it. Yes, I did that. It's checked off. I did that on May 14th. Done. It clarifies all of that memory type of thing. And it's so helpful. And then in the other thing is, it just is a measure of your capacity. It really does help to figure out um, how much you can do. And there's times you can't do very much. It's There's times you really do have to just like, you know what, this is where I am right now. I can't do very much, but that's okay. And you will see sometimes if you've been like in your in the grief that you've gone through, or even if you've been ill or sick, and you can go back and you can say, you know, I am able every day, I'm able to do a little bit more. My capacity is building. It's getting better. Another thing I would say is have a wall calendar. We all put everything in our phones, all of our appointments. Uh, we've got our phones just loaded up. That's what we use. But what I find in working with people is they, they can't see at a glance everything that they've got in their life going on. And so some people feel like they are just totally overcommitted and they get everything laid out on a calendar and they see, oh, they do have blocks of time. Or the reason they feel overcommitted is because they're doing a bunch of stuff that they're not passionate about, that it's not important to them. So they're drained from it and they're doing, they're spending time in the wrong places. So that having a calendar can be very, very telling about where you're spending your time if you see it at a glance. The other thing about this calendar, include celebrations, fun events, something to look forward to. I think this is so important. Um, and I've talked to people who are going through hard times or loss or grief, like, like all of you have, have and are going through. And it helps to look forward to something that you know you have something special out there. And you can see it ahead a month, two months, six months ahead. It helps you day to day. The other thing about that, too, that I, again, I've learned is that you can also see those days that, that are on the calendar that are tied to memories of your spouse. They're, 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 they're there and you can intentionally plan for those days in a way that is helpful to you. You know, what is it that you need? Do you need that day to do something with a, a group of friends? Or do you need that day to just be alone? It's going to be different. But, but think ahead of, on that. Plan for that in advance. I think it can really make a difference. And if you see it on the calendar, you can prepare for it. It just doesn't just come up on you and loom for you that day. Have an accountability partner. Maybe somebody you talk over what your values are. Somebody that you talk about what it means and how you're living this intentional life and what joy you're finding in really planning your days instead of just letting them drift away. I think accountability partners helps. And then begin with the end in mind as well. Again, Psalms 90 said, you know, why is it important? It's important so that we can be wise and we can use our days as we should. And and I actually thought about this so much uh, because when, when Rob had his first surgery, he actually put a folder together of everything that I need to, need to know when he dies. He's very intentional. He's planned for the end of his life. And it got me thinking, even though I've been working with the Wings for Widows, I haven't really done that for myself. And I need to be intentional. And so I, I also want to say, you know, Chris Bentley has put this book together. It is such a good book. I am going to intentionally do this. And I would say, if you have not done this or taken Chris' class or gotten this book, get it. And maybe intentionally as the summer comes up, take 15 minutes a week to work on this book and get it done, your goal for the end of the summer. But plan, really begin with the end in mind. And it will again, be something that if you do, it will put your mind at ease. 
in I just want to close with this. I know we're we're tight here on time, but um, in 1997, I went to Ukraine on a trip, and we worked with kids and did youth programs for them. And it, Ukraine was was this poor Ukrainian village, and the kids were just amazing, but starved for anything that was fun and helpful to them. And we did a lesson and we gave each of the kids a piece of paper and markers and they were supposed to do a personal drawing and reflection on what the lesson was. And there was this little boy, Sasha, and he sat there doing nothing, just, just with his white sheet of paper on the table, never even started the drawing. So I said through my translator, Sasha, what are you doing? You need to get started. You need to get started on that drawing. And he said, oh, I don't want to waste my piece of paper. So I'm visualizing what my drawing will look like before I begin. I've never gotten over just the incredible and profound wisdom of this Ukrainian boy who had lived with the daily reality that he could not waste one single thing, not even a single sheet of white paper. And yet we many times go around without having the true perspective that we are wasting days and days and days of our life without a thought. What are you going to do? What can you do to figure out what do you value? What's important to you? Live a life that is filled with intention and purpose and passion so that you may have wisdom and live your life with great value for ongoing purposes now and through eternity. I want to say one last thing. Extend grace to yourself too. It is hard. Days are hard. We all can't have perfection. Absolutely not. None of us do. We are extended grace by a loving Christ when we don't deserve it. We need to extend grace to ourselves too and remember to celebrate all that God has given us, all the gifts, the talents, and treasure every single day as we go in. I hope that this has been helpful, encouraging. I want it to spur you on to simple actions, but to find incredible joy in living a life with intention and purpose. Blessings to you. I know we're late, but did anybody have any questions? Yeah, questions or comments. It's very, um, it's very encouraging, Suze, even though we, we probably all fail and I'm glad you said that at the end. Oh, can we get a copy of your poem of that poem? Oh, yes, yes, I will. I'll, I'll get you a copy of it. Um, here, here's my here's my copy from literally this is like 1980. <laughs> it's, it's this little things, but I will get I will get you a copy of that. Yeah. And it's been um. It's just been something that is easy to remember and it kind of focus. So absolutely good idea. Yeah, I, you know, I, again, we, I think as widows, we probably, especially those of us closer to the death of our spouse are still in that phase where we're like, okay, I got out of bed. I got dressed. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, and living intentionally is probably you know, it's, it's hard enough to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. But after a while, and I'm there, you know, after three or four years and everyone's different, you know, you come to a place and you think, well, what is it that God has for me now? 
my life, I'm still here. I'm, I have had however many years with my spouse. These are the things he taught me. This is who I am because of what I've gone through. Now, what do I do with all of that? Yeah. A yeah. whole load of wisdom and, and um, experience in life that, that rests in, in us. And, and it's up to us to figure out, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do with all of this? Yeah. And that's really what Wings for Widows is doing such a good job, I think, of just making that encouraging and and you can't take every step but take a step take a step i was gonna say i learned this about the capacity and not really being able to do this when um, my second baby was born i was in the hospital for 10 days with complicated c-section and then i immediately had gallbladder surgery and i ended up in the hospital for eight days with that and had a two-year-old plus a new baby and I remember one day making a can of concentrated orange juice. Remember those cans that you, I don't even know if they have them anymore, but you just mix, you know, three little things of water and stir it. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, this is amazing. I actually accomplished something. And so it is, it's also just giving yourself credit for what you, what you do. And sometimes it's not very much but that's what you can do that day. And that's okay. Yeah. 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 And I think that, you know, again, I want to encourage everyone to give yourself grace, but some of these tips like keeping a notebook by your bedside and, and getting stuff out of your head and into a piece of paper is so helpful when you're, when you can't sleep. Yeah. And, um, and also, you know, living according to the things that you value most and not letting things that you don't value take over your life. It's so easy to get sucked into a TV series or something. And that is not an, in, it's not an intentional life. So um, anyway, I really appreciate what you have to say, Susie. I, I want to let everybody go because we are yep. past our time. Yeah. Thank you, and I hope you'll all um, keep an eye peeled for the announcements when they come out in August about our fall sessions. We're going to be starting out with um, Michelle Neff Hernandez, who is the person who started Soaring Spirits. You may have heard of that. And something called Camp Widow. And she is actually in Australia initiating Camp Widow for Australia right now. So she's an exciting speaker to have, um, very well known and very wise person. So look forward to that, that'll be in September. Have a wonderful summer, stay safe. God bless you and keep you. I always sign off under his wings. <laughs>